I'm going to show you a technique uh, to add glow effect to your images. I'm sure that you haven't seen this technique uh, before. It's an advantage of being a visual effect artist and a uh, and photographer in the same time. So sometimes I come up with the techniques that uh, no one else uses in edit when it comes to editing photos. Uh, I should tell that this technique uh, you can only use in Capture One, or if you are using Adobe Cordex, you can do it in Photoshop as well. But you cannot do it in uh, Lightroom. So without further uh, delay, let's uh, jump into the software and edit this photo. I already have edited this image, um, but I'm going to start with the, the very, very quick and uh, fast edit on this image. And then uh, we apply this uh, technique to create some glow effect on it. Uh, here is the raw file. And as you can see here, it's a very contrasty scene. And uh, the first challenge I have here is to retain back some detail in the sky. So I have a very, very high dynamic and uh, contrasty scene. Now, I, I reset this uh, image to its, uh, its uh, original uh, raw format. Uh, the only thing I have done here is the crop. Uh, so I crop the image a little bit to make it a little tighter. Let's start with the global adjustment to this image. First, uh, first thing first, um, when I look at the sky, you might see that this is overexposed. And in some extent it is, but it's uh, the best I could do uh, without uh, clipping too much shadows here. Uh, looking at the histogram, you can see that I have a lot of, you know, uh, known highlights here but don't uh, deceived by this histogram because usually the cameras uh, apply some sort of film simulation or curve or adjustment to the image especially to the jpegs uh, but uh, for because i'm using a fuji xt4 camera and fuji cameras always apply a film simulation to their pictures uh, i usually take pictures with um, a standard film simulation so it's uh, supposedly uh, it's a the most uh, flat and uh, not too much dramatic uh, changes in the image uh, so it should be it should be fairly flat still it's a, it has a, some curve to apply to the image and makes the image a little bit more contrasty than it should be when I took the picture, a uh, histogram on the back of the camera on the screen was a little bit different than this that we have here. So first thing first, we need to reverse that and go to a film, uh, remove the film simulation. Uh, in Capture One, it's very easy. You go to um, a style panel and uh, find your basic characteristic uh, tab. And uh, here you can switch from auto and auto means whatever you chose uh, when you took the picture in my case it was uh, provia standard and then we go to the bottom of this list click on the linear response and linear response actually is the the flattest the raw format of your image get back to the settings and now here i will uh, reduce the exposure and reduce the contrast because the scene is super contrasty. Reduce some of the highlights, increase shadows, just a touch. And you can see now that uh, most of the details in the highlights came back to life. I still have some few uh, spots like these clouds here that they are overexposed and I can't do anything about them now. Uh, but that's okay because uh, we don't need too much clarity in the, in the sky. But this image is a little bit too um, cool, so let's warm it up. Okay, that sounds a little bit too much. Let's go back to this. Maybe a little bit more magenta as well. And, uh, I'm gonna apply some curve adjustment to retain some of the contrast. Bring back some of the contrast to the image. And that's about it. I'm lifting up black points also adding some uh, gamma to the image with this curve and uh, before i finish here i like to change uh, 
Oh yeah, reduce the clarity a little bit. I uh, usually tend to reduce the clarity in uh, pictures, especially pictures from trees and uh, forest. Maybe reduce the or increase the structure. That's good. And in the color editor tab, let's pick up them um, in the advanced mode. Uh, let's pick up the greens and uh, expand that selection to mostly towards greens and less yellows and reduce the hue move the hue towards yellowish colors and maybe it's a bit more saturation and brightness let's do the same to yellows and browns and make them a little bit more saturated and more yeah i guess a little bit more red and increase the brightness in those yellows that brings the image more to life i think another one for the this red leaves here on the ground i'm gonna increase the saturation for those and for the blues in the sky they are too saturated so i'm gonna drop the saturation in the blues a little bit so this is the basic uh, adjustment to this image and now i'm gonna apply uh, the technique that i was talking about so here we go one advantage of using capture one is you can create uh, layers in capture one and apply all the settings and all the adjustment in a specific layer and you can name the layers which is a great idea to do that. So let's add a layer here, Re uh, rename it to Glow. And here's the fun part about creating this, uh, uh, working with layers in, in Capture One. There is something called the Magic Brush here, and with Magic Brush, it's uh, actually uh, you click on a pixel or an area of your image, and it select the the pixels that they are in the same tone this is like a magic wand in uh, in photoshop so let's let's click on the sky here to show the mask i hit m or you can't uh, toggle this uh, mask button here on and off to see the mask uh, there are some spots here inside these leaves between these leaves that i am selecting here too as well and it did a good job in selecting the sky if I right click on the name of the layer, you can select the feather mask. And what feather mask is doing, uh, it's blurring, blurring this, uh, this selection. So I'm gonna blur it with uh, like 10 pixels, around 10, 15. And let's apply that. And you can see that now the mask is a little bit whitish around this area but it's also leaked over the, the dark parts that's what we want to do we want to to create this effect that this light is coming through the scene and the scatters around the edges of this tree this is how the glow uh, actually happens in real life in, in in physics let's let's do another another round on this one again i will select the, the magic uh, brush and click on the sky again to fill up the gaps that it's now white because of the um, uh, blurring effect now again i'm gonna click on this one and further the mask once more this time i'm gonna increase the amount to something like 30 uh, 35 that's good click on the sky again to fill up the the mask once more I'm uh, missing some parts. Uh, I'm gonna fill those as well. And uh, I'm not worried about the selection in the water. Maybe it looks good afterwards, or maybe I will remove it. Uh, it's easy to, to clean that out later. For the last time, I'm going to use the feather 
and this time increase the feather to 100 and click on the sky fill up the gaps once again now i have a mask that is uh, if i zoom here for instance you can see that it's this mask is bleeding out to the dark part of the image. Let's remove the mask. I mean, uh, let's turn off the mask uh, overlay and increase the exposure. You can see now it not only brighten up the sky, but it's also affecting the, in the surrounding. And it's like that is bleeding to the dark part of the image. So it creates a very natural um, glow effect. If I turn off this in uh, this layer and just look at this uh, image, you might be able to feel it because we have some natural glow happening around the hot spot in the sky in these contrasted areas. But I want to emphasize this. So let's turn on the glow again and uh, let's increase the exposure a little bit, not much and uh, we can reduce the contrast use the level or curve perhaps to create that sort of soft light if i turn this on and off you would see the, the difference let's zoom here here is before it is after so with this technique you will add a um, quite nice uh, glow to your image naturally so it doesn't look unnatural okay let me warm it up a little bit and uh, i think that's uh, that's good for now we can reduce the highlights increase the shadows um, because now i'm blowing out the, the sky maybe i will create a new layer again with the same uh, magic brush i select the sky let's hit the m to see the mask yeah, this looks good and uh, i don't want the sky to be overexposed so much so i reduce the exposure just for the sky so it doesn't affect the glowy part that we created and reduce the highlights just a touch maybe maybe i will cool it down and there we go that's the technique that uh, i i came up with uh, and you can refine this it was like a, a quick demonstration you can refine this uh, mask with the uh, refine mask and apply some refine to it and uh, that also helps sometimes if you have uh, some sort of edges and that looks much nicer. <sighs>